Today we're going to be looking at a video by the Action Lab. Specifically this video right here that says, Warning, do not try, seeing how close I can get to a drop of neutrons. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. Okay, today we're going to be seeing how close you can get to a drop of a neutron star. Oh, okay, neutron stars. All right, okay. I was a bit confused earlier about what he meant by a drop of neutrons. It's like, well, a neutron only has a half-life of about 15 minutes, but He's talking about neutron stars. Those things can last for a long time, usually unless they collide with another one and form a black hole or get swallowed by a black hole, but okay. Wondering if this was gonna decay away on him, but. <laughs> so before we can test this, let's talk about what a neutron star actually is. So you have normal stars like our sun, mm -hmm. and our sun has a lot of mass. And when you have a lot of mass, mass has gravity and it wants to compress together and it wants to attract each other and compress tighter and tighter together. But the reason our sun doesn't just collapse in on itself is because there's another force that's pushing it apart. And that force is due to the explosion that's constantly happening in the sun due to nuclear fusion. So, yep. Uh, balance between gravity versus fusion. That's, that's right on. Don't know if I'd call it an explosion though. It's more of just opposing forces but i see what he means though it's an an omnidirectional force emanating from the center because it's all going in versus gravity versus all going out i can i can understand what he means hydrogen is constantly forming into helium and it's exploding the sun so this exploding force is pushing it out and gravity is pushing it in more and more together but i guess it's the more subtle definition of ex if explosion being in a violent expanse outward versus saying a bomb because the sun's not tearing itself apart at this point but <laughs> again not sure it was the word i would have used but i can i can understand what he's talking about the sun's not actively exploding gonna have to wait a few billion years on that one what can happen sometimes is if there's enough mass then the mass will keep collapsing in on itself in the star and it'll collapse more and more and more and more until actual electrons are becoming so close together that they become as close together as they can possibly get and the only thing that's stopping them from overlapping each other is the poly exclusion principle and the poly exclusion principle says that you can't have two electrons in the same place at the same time in the same state but what happens if you try to force them more and more together is the only thing that's holding them apart is due to the poly exclusion principle so poly exclusion principle we're still dealing with relatively long ranges here on the atomic scale as opposed to the nuclear scale so the order of 10 to the minus 9th 10 to the minus 10th meters as opposed to like 10 to the minus 15th meters so not quite the range where you have the uh fusion but where nuclear fusion occurs but here it's He's talking about the the gravitational force encroaching on the range of nuclear fusion when when a star collapses like this does like you said just gets too big it doesn't stop there if you have too much mass the mass still wants to attract each other and not even the poly exclusion principle can keep the electrons from getting closer together so as it keeps compressing stronger and stronger together, the electrons and the protons get so close together that you have electron capture and it turns a proton and electron into a neutron and you end up with a pure neutron soup. That's the fusion range and yeah, getting much, much closer. That's called a neutron star. And it's so dense because you no longer have these protons and electrons, but you have just pure neutrons with no electric charge that can come very close together. So today I want to give you a sense of how dense this is. A uh, little tablespoon if you want to have a little sip of that neutron soup. Basically melt down 10,000 aircraft carriers and put them in there. <laughs> it's so much more dense than regular atoms. I'll show you what would happen if you had just a very tiny drop of a neutron star and brought it on Earth. Ooh, nothing so good. So I have here a magic cube. And what's cool about this cube is we can increase the density up to the density of a neutron star and see what happens. 
So to start off, let me show you what it looks like. What? So I have a cube here, <laughs> just at normal earth density. Put it on there. It weighs around only five grams. Now density I'm gonna do my magic touch on this cube. So now this is getting really heavy for the size of it. Now you can see how heavy it is. Put it in there. It weighs 50 grams instead of five. Okay. Okay, he's... He must, he's doing some sort of um, editing trick to make it like a, okay, a, uh, a, a hypothetical thing. I was going to say, nothing, nothing's that dense <laughs> that you can get a hold of. <laughs> this is cool, though. It's a great visualization exercise. Now let's Got a little scale. The even more and go. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Holy cow. He's using magic. <laughs> Just oh, broke boy. it through my jar got so heavy <laughs> holy cow so you can see it's extremely heavy now for the size of it barely pick it oh, there up there you go Ugh. use your magic to give yourself super strength so you can do this experiment <laughs> oh. look at that <laughs> ow so i would say this weighs around one pound now can see how heavy it is here. Ow. Okay, I'm increasing the density. I can't even hold it anymore. Oh, it went through the table. <laughs> About 1,100 <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna need a stronger base, but let's just go ahead and turn it all the way up to Neutron Star and see what happens. Three, two, one. It's gonna go through. Whoa, it just shot through the earth. Well, what are we up to now? Uh, 200 billion pounds, huh? All right. <laughs> so right now it's basically vaporizing the mantle in front of it and leaving a trail of hot plasma behind it. In a while as it falls, it'll eventually just become lodged in the Earth's core. So let's try this again with a holder that will actually stop it from falling through the table and through the Earth. Okay, now let's redo this experiment with a magic stand that can support the weight of the 100 billion kilograms in that tiny little centimeter cube there. <laughs> now, because this is so dense... Magic stand that can support 3.6 billion pounds per square inch. <laughs> it has its own gravity force that I can feel. And what this feels like to me is that when I start to walk closer to it, yeah. it kind of feels like I'm starting to walk down a steep downhill because the gravity is pulling me towards the neutron star is he gonna get instead get down towards the earth. So I kind of feel like I'm walking down a hill. So even just sitting next to it on a table, <laughs> it's like gravity is pointing that way towards the drop of the neutron star instead of- This is funny and kind of hard to do. Straight down towards the earth. Uh, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> okay, now because gravity is proportional to the square of distance, it becomes increasingly hard to pull away from the neutron star drop the closer you yeah. get to it. So if you get closer than Don't a critical hit the event, distance, the event horizon. then you won't be able to get away from it, ever. Yeah, I guess, I guess you can't, you don't use the term event horizon because this isn't a black hole, but it, it, it's the same idea. And well, I guess I'm event horizon for faster than light escape versus your normal speed. Maybe you can use his magical powers to travel at the speed of light. So that means that if I want to touch this neutron star drop, I'm going to need another plan. And that plan has to do with water. Okay, so I managed to get some water around this. And if I didn't have this box around it, it would look like this. It would be a complete sphere around. Yeah, yeah, because it has its own source of gravity. That's, that's actually the same reason why um, planets, stars, significantly large asteroids they end up turning into a sphere because that's how gravity works with the drop at the very center because gravity is now pulling it all towards the center yep. now normally <laughs> the point of no return with a drop this size of a neutron star is around eight inches around eight inches okay. away your arm would become too heavy to ever pull back and then it would just get sucked in and probably get ripped off and it would pull your whole body in and you'd compress down into the neutron star now, one question I have about this, um, will your arm hit a Roche limit? And as it gets pulled apart, will it for this pile of flesh and bone and viscera that just orbits it, kind of like the way that uh, Saturn's rings orbit it? 
Because that's, that's what would happen if, say, the moon got too close to the Earth. It wouldn't actually crash itself in there. If you want to see my reaction to a full explanation of that, and this video also uses magic, I'll pin a comment down below. Uh, Kurtzgazat did a video on that sort of concept. I just wonder if it would, would apply on this small-scale droplet of neutron star. <laughs> <laughs> but if you put water around it, something interesting happens. Okay. So let's see if this orange gets sucked in. Is that a normal orange or is that a magic orange? Huh. It just floats. So at this range, it's hundreds of times of Earth's gravity, but it's floating on top here. So that means that buoyancy has nothing to do with the strength of gravity. And the reason it works like this is because the neutron star drop is pulling on the water just yeah. as much as it's pulling on the orange. But it pulls on the water a little more because the water's a little more dense. So the orange still floats and it's on closer. top of the water. So this means on different planets, whether it had stronger or weaker gravity than Earth, bolts would still be able to float just fine. They'd have the same buoyancy as on Earth because buoyancy is independent of the gravitational factor. So that means my hand should be okay. Okay, yeah, as long as it, that, that's the key point, as long as incompressible. So it's basically the same reason why you're, you just feel a bit lighter walking around in the swimming pool, and uh, it's easier to do uh, push-ups at the, at the bottom of a pool than it is on the surface of the Earth. Okay, I buy that, though. No. I think we'll be testing um, water's incompressibility with something this dense. I'll stress test that one for sure. Because my hand is less dense than water, so my hand will never get pulled towards the neutron star stronger than water. So as long as I keep it in water, I should be able to get to as close to it as I can. Wouldn't recommend trying this with a black hole. Of course, the water won't be there for long. <laughs> But what happens when I get close to it is it's like there's the, this impenetrable layer. I can't, I can't get past because my fingers are mm. less dense than water. Basically, I can't penetrate this layer of water because the Too neutron dense. star is pulling down on the water no matter what, harder than it's pulling down on my finger. And so no matter what, I can't get through the layer of water around the ball. So even in this situation, even when you have water around it, you're protected from the gravity, but that means that you're gonna end up with a very small layer that you can't penetrate with your finger as long as you're less dense than water. That's fascinating. I didn't really think about it like that. I uh, feel enough, few of the light bulbs are starting to come on. <laughs> Now, if you put some alcohol in this water and you actually became more dense than the water, then it would suck your finger yep. in and you wouldn't be able to pull it off. So no matter what, even in this situation, you wouldn't be able to touch a neutron star. You could get very close if you surrounded it with water, but you could never actually touch it. That was fascinating and it went a completely different direction than I thought it would. It started off as being a bit theoretical and then I... <laughs> This is the first of the Action Lab videos that I've seen. I didn't realize we were turning into a bit of a uh, magic show that was uh, <laughs> really cool to watch. He had me going for, for a minute there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.